Hey, we're uh, back again here. It's a new day um, for you. It's probably all the same video, but uh, I only got as far as making the actual steel wheel motor mounts yesterday. Um, the video of it isn't going to be exactly as I wanted, as you maybe have seen. Uh, I was testing out a new mic with my camera, which wasn't picking it up, so I wound up losing a bunch of audio. Um, but that's okay. I still have some of the footage. Um, I mean, it's just fabricating stuff there. So this is the way it's going to sit. Um, this whole assembly is going to move forward and back to allow for our track tension. That hub with the hub face will go on here. We're going to have the same tire as we have on the rest of the vehicle to keep things interchangeable uh, as a drive tire. The grousers are going to drop in between the lugs. Uh, the spacing will work out perfectly that this tire, due to the friction put on it uh, through the tensioning and also the actual lugs itself, is going to grab those grousers and rotate the tracks. Um, I'm pretty confident in it working well. Um, there, there's a lot of friction that's going to be developed over the 180 degrees of this tire that's in contact with all of the grousers. So I think it's going to work out well. Uh, today, the goal here is to finish working on the back frame. Uh, we need to put a vertical support in. We need to add on another piece, weld it all in, of two inch heavy wall. And then I'm going to put some flat bar in here and add on the angle supports that will also allow us to cinch and bolt everything down. So yeah, the rest of this episode is pretty much going to be cutting, fitting, doing some welding in here. I'm going to get all the pieces cut up and uh, not really bore you with that process. And once I have everything cut, I'll, uh, I'll get the camera rolling in here and uh, you can kind of see all this come together. And then if I really feel ambitious, I might finish getting it all final welded in. Um, that's my goal for today. Let's see if I can get it done. All right, and through the wonderful magic of video editing, I decided to uh, just show this part first here now before we get into the rest of that work. Um, as you can see in the background, I have those uh, main wheel motor mounts all fully completed. I just decided to do that off camera and get it done. It was easier that way. Um, so here we go. I got the flat bars cut and, uh, you know, deburred down and then we're going to take them over to the vise. Well, before I got to that, I had to uh, get in and get this vise cleaned. Um, it's kind of a fun process to do, get all those uh, chips and filings out, but at the same time, it's annoying. So I don't uh, do it as much as I should, but anyhow, I get it all uh, cleaned out and then let's get the vise mounted. I'm uh, not going to worry too much this time about getting the vise all that true. Um, just locking it down and uh, by eye and I'll move the ways to uh, line up the part. There we go. We got the flat bar set up in the vise with a set of parallels and uh, I'm just eyeballing this pilot bit. Uh, ideally I should have used a center first but my punch was so large it uh, is centered pretty easily on it. Um, so then I drilled that pilot and then I went in with a 27 64 bit uh, which is the minor diameter for a half 13 um, and we're doing two of these in here. Remember these are going to be the jack bolts to adjust the uh, the track wheel motor mount and then I went in with it still in the vise and uh, hand tap those with a taper tap and then I followed it out after with a uh, bottoming tap. All right, we got those out of the milling machine and then I'm just doing a, some chamfering on all those holes, deburring everything. Um, I really like to try and do that step. It makes everything look a little bit nicer. And then we got it set up in the wheel motor mount here. Um, I was trying to explain when the uh, mic wasn't working that uh, it would have been better had I ground all this mill scale off first, but uh, I didn't exactly have a plan. So I sort of felt that I'd just deal with the consequences and the little angle die grinder got in there real good with a two inch flap disc. So it really wasn't too big of a pain. And I could utilize those threaded holes in the plates here to help clamp them down to the actual wheel motor mount. Um, it worked pretty good. 
I could have had them a little bit more aligned with the holes through the plates, but uh, you know, I worry about spending time where I need time, and this is really just a tensioner part, so I didn't care too much of the alignment. All right, and it was time to uh, set up and suit up and start welding those plates in the mounts. Uh, it went pretty good. I put a little preheat into here. It's a uh, pretty heavy material and I'm not using all that big of a wire feed, but uh, it seemed to do the trick. Heat affected zone looked pretty good and uh, yeah, pretty happy with how it all welded in there. Like I said earlier, had I you know, truly plan this out a little bit better. I would have been able to do a lot of this work before having already built the mount, but I didn't have an exact clear plan until it sort of all came together. Um, I did allow enough room for myself to get in there and do all the welding I needed to, so for me it really wasn't a problem. And uh, yeah, I'm happy with the result. You can see here the uh, mounts really came together. They're, they're looking like a, a true part now so now it's time to get them sandblasted and some good enamel paint on them and all right I uh, got all the pieces cut I didn't bore you with all those details um, uh, you've seen some of the cutting before but this is kind of what it's going to look like um, these will have the two holes top and bottom that will actually through bolt and hold the wheel motor mount on all together um, this angle I forgot Forgot I need to do uh, grind out a little bit of weld here to let this fit in tight. Um, this angle is also, once it gets welded into here, going to provide some lateral strength for it there. I was planning on doing some bracing back, but I think it's going to work out well this way. I'm going to have a piece of flat bar in here that is going to be fully welded. And then when we clad in the side to form the hull of the machine, because it is amphibious or that's the intention, um, then I can cut it out and I'll have a nice seam to weld along and not have to worry about fiddling in all these little areas. Um, and then this will get some bracing back down, maybe an angle brace to really keep this uh, mount from torquing and twisting on me. Um, so that's kind of what it's like. Um, if you don't know me, I love clamps. You can't ever have enough clamps. You'll see me use tons of them. All right, here we go. Back to the fun stuff, working with aluminum. As always, you've got to get it uh, wire brushed, get that oxide layer off. And then after that, I like to come in with a rag with some acetone on it and wipe any of the oils and greases and, uh, and kind of the wire brush dust off. Once I was done that, I got into... Uh, setting it all up and put a little clamp on there for some tension and tap that upright into place. Um, I took the weight with a jack to kind of help stabilize it and then we really get into checking square here. Just keep checking, tap it, check again. It's uh, I've learned over the years you want to be as square as you can and keep checking because often when you check later on and it's not what you want you get frustrated. After that, uh, come in with the spool gun, try and tack all the corners. I really never utilized the spool gun too much in the past. I primarily TIG for a long time with aluminum, but doing something like this, you really got to get that spool gun. It would just take too long to get in there with the TIG and, and do it like that. The spool gun, it's a little bit cruder of a method. Um, but it's a little faster at getting that heat into that base metal. This stuff was pretty thick, so after I was done tacking, I did preheat parts quite a bit before I got welding. With that upright tacked in, I was able to get that little extra piece welded in there to give me the spacing for the wheel motor mount and, and be able to actually get in after and tighten up all those bolts. So once I got that clamped down, kind of repeated the same process, tapped it in, made sure it was tight everywhere, used the uh, square to check flush on it in this case. And once I got that done, I moved along to tacking that in as well. And I like to just do, you know, generally four tacks or so all around the part and uh, try not to put too much heat into any one area until you have everything held together as kind of one first. After I got that stub tacked on, I worked on getting the square piece of flat bar clamped into place. And then just as every other part, get a bunch of tacks on all around it, and then move on to the next piece. 
And once we do that, we move on to the next part. It's always best to put a component together with its pieces, tacking it first. If you go and put a part in and weld that joint and then move on to the next, things will start warping and twisting. It's always better to use the part to help fixture itself and it'll just make the outcome stay square and, and to the measurements you want. All right, that's one side tacked together there. Um, I'm waiting to drill the holes till after, making things a little bit more difficult on myself, but I don't want to risk pushing holes in and then realizing I need to adjust something. So I'll get the mount on, um, use some uh, transfer punches, and just drill those out after. But that's looking like what it's going to come together. Be fully welded in. I think it'll be really robust and strong. And uh, time to get on to the other side. So this, uh, this jib crane of mine here, it, it has to be hands down probably the best job aid I have in my shop. I uh, just put it in last year. Um, I actually bought it at auction. I think it's pretty old just judging by the way it's designed and some of the square head bolts on the uh, leveling system. But with that being said, it's phenomenal. I paid $130 for it. Um, to be honest, it was taken apart. I don't think people even really knew what it was or how it would go together, but I've worked with them before and uh, I jumped at the chance to get that. It, uh, it just, it makes doing everything so easy. I mean, I don't know what I'd do without it at this point. Like this frame isn't super heavy. It's, it's probably a 150 pounds or so, but the fact that it just saves my back, like, I mean, it's awesome. I love it. I don't think I'm ever going to stop loving it. Anything to make your life easier and save a bit of time. It's what you want. Boom, there we go. Just rolled the frame and it took 30 seconds and next to no effort. All right, well now that we got that uh, frame rolled there, um, I'm gonna do a bunch of cleaning up and uh, wire brushing of all these joints, but for when I modified the back end, now that I have it in this position, I mean, I got joints here, 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 you know, all, all the way around. So there's going to be a lot of uh, prepping and welding. I'll show you a bit of it. I'm not going to bore you with all of it. Um, and yeah, we're going to get this thing welded in. It should uh, turn out really nicely. Um, I find with spool gunning aluminum, it's, it's so much more uh, liquid than working with steel. Um, I just prefer if I can, you know, just go flat. There's no reason to try and go vertical or overhead. I mean, I, I can do it. Um, it's just a little bit more finicky, I find. So I have the luxury of this crane and rolling it around. So we're going to do everything on the horizontal and get the best quality welds we can. I am going to, this is, you know, quite a large mass of aluminum in here and aluminum over steel. If you're not familiar with it, it's a much better conductor. It's, you know, it's why that used to be used in house wiring other than Aluminum builds aluminum oxide. So the wire brushing gets the aluminum oxide off. Uh, I don't remember the exact temperatures, but oxide takes like 2000 degrees Fahrenheit to get through, but the actual base metal itself melts at like 12 or 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's why we want to wire brush it with a dedicated stainless brush. I wipe everything down with acetone to get any of the greases or oils off. And then uh, I'm going to throw some preheat at this because the spool gun you know, I'm running kind of right at its limits here, and these are nice critical parts, so I want to get as much penetration as I can. Um, I do have some nice uh, chamfers in here because I'm dealing with the round corner tubing, so that gives me a little bit more time to work and get the heat into the, the material. 
Um, and, you know, we're going to be rolling this to the other side on its bottom, uh, upside down, the other way. Um, I have the ability to do it, so I'm going to go ahead and, and try. So, yeah, welding montage. Alright, well we got this all fully welded in, um, I'm very happy with how it went, um, got all, uh, all the sides, corners, everything done, so now what I'm going to need to do is uh, just get in there and smooth out the top and bottoms and I should be good to go, we can get those wheel motors actually on there. Alright everyone been quite a long video now I think this is going to be a perfect time to end it um, in the next video watch as I uh, start working on the hull or the cab uh, I just picked up all the aluminum I needed for that so it's going to be really cool and I think people are going to be interested once they see the uh, cab take shape as always please hit that like button leave a comment I'd really appreciate it um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on how the build is going thanks